What we have seen now uh, the latest, uh, in the latest uh, uh, meetings uh, with uh, our UK counterparts uh, is that um, where we are saying, yeah, okay, this political declaration is a good one, but if you want, we want to go in, 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 into a much more ambitious uh, political declaration or more precise political declaration. From the UK side, there is uh, a, a, an opposite uh, uh, movement in, in an opposite uh, direction. Uh, they uh, uh, propose to have a, a, a political declaration with uh, more general, uh, uh, who is um, in fact going into the direction uh, more or less of a, a, a free trade agreement only. Uh, and then an FTA that uh, uh, is uh, uh, not based on uh, a lot of leveling playing field, not based on regulatory alignment, but is based on, uh, on, 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 on more divergence than, than, than convergence. And our point of view is very simple. I think that everybody can understand that here in, in, in AFCO, but certainly in other committees, uh, the more divergence... Uh, the UK is looking for uh, in this future relationship, uh, the less access there will be uh, to the single market, uh, naturally. Uh, the, the narrower also will be the future trade uh, relationship. And that's not a, a, a question of uh, negotiation tactics uh, by the EU. That's a question of, 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 of logic consequence uh, of the protection of our single market. We will not penalize all companies uh, in, in that way by saying, look, uh, uh, the UK in a free trade uh, agreement that will be very broad uh, can enter without any tariffs in our single market, but they have not to comply with our ecological, social, uh, labor standards, uh, taxation, uh, whatever you want. Uh, so the, the less... Uh, leveling playing field they accept, the less regulatory alignment uh, they accept, yeah, the smaller uh, the FTA will, will, will be. Uh, that is uh, because we are not stupid. We're going to not kill uh, our companies by saying, yeah, okay, you can enter with your goods uh, or market uh, free of tariffs, but you don't have to complain with uh, our standards. Uh, whatever these standards are, it can be industrial, ecological, technical, uh, social, uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and so on. So that, that uh, we are worried about that. The fact that after years of, uh, of a, a UK uh, government who wanted to go into a deep relationship between the UK and us by means of a, an association agreement, what was also the proposal by the European Parliament, what we feel for the moment is a UK counterpart who, who is going into a different uh, direction, say, uh, this political declaration, don't put too much uh, 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 words in it, and, and, and certainly uh, an FTA, maybe not a broad FTA, even a small FTA is, is enough because we don't want to accept leveling playing field or regulatory alignment as the basis for such uh, an, uh, an agreement. So that's my third point. There is not only the problem of the backstop, there is also the problem of the political declaration and the future relationship that is on the table for the moment. And that brings me to the fourth point, that is the no deal. Uh, uh, are we prepared? Well, how far uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we are? Um, I have to tell you that um, uh, we uh, are, uh, have now uh, got from the Commission, as you know, a lot of new uh, files, uh, the last part of the files, the last package of the files, uh, to prepare ourselves uh, for a, a no deal. We have started this intensively, as you know, in the Parliament since December 2017, and I have sent to uh, President uh, Sassoli uh, uh, a letter in the name of the Brexit Steering Group urging him that all uh, these additional files that the Commission has been put on the table uh, uh, should be adopted uh, before the 31st of October. Uh, so uh, Parliament uh, will do everything uh, what is necessary so that by the 31st of October all the uh, preparedness and contingency measures uh, are 
uh, adopted. And again, these uh, preparations, these uh, contingency measures, are measures that are, uh, are based on the idea to protect the interests of the European Union. It are not what uh, some people are uh, calling for, uh, mini-deals or side-deals. Uh, why we don't want mini-deals or side-deals? Because if you start to go in the direction of a mini-deal, for example, on aviation, uh, because uh, that's important, then uh, tomorrow they say, yeah, and we do it on fish, and the third day they say, yeah, and now on transport, and the fourth day, yeah, on citizens, and the fifth day on... And, and before uh, you know it, uh, you have, uh, yeah, the... the uh, the, what we want to avoid, the pick-and-choose uh, um, strategy uh, from some people who say, okay, we are interested in a deal with the Union about this, but we are not interested in a deal uh, with the Union about that. The Union is not the menu card of restaurant eh? uh, where you go in and say, I, 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 I take the, the card of the restaurant and say, oh, I'm interested in this, 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 but all the rest... You, you have to take the advantages, but also you have to uh, take the obligations uh, of, uh, of the Union. Therefore, we say, uh, if we are preparing ourselves, if we want to help, uh, for example, our citizens, we'll, we will do it, but unilaterally, uh, and not as part of a mini-deal uh, that is separated from the whole uh, package, because otherwise we go into... Uh, a strategy which is uh, bad for the interest of the Union where everybody can pick and choose his, uh, his policy, say, oh, give me some good deal about the financial services, but uh, don't talk uh, with me about the freedom of movement. That's not uh, 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 an attitude that we uh, from all sides uh, can uh, accept. So that's on preparedness. We will be prepared on the 31st of October. We will have done in this House our, uh, our work, uh, and uh, uh, there uh, will be uh, all measures will be uh, taken, have been taken uh, to protect the interest of the uh, uh, European uh, European Union. Then I come to the next point. The next point is uh, fourth point. I think is the extension. Uh, uh, issue, um, you know, uh, we have been very clear in the resolution. We are in favour of an extension if we also see what is the way forward, naturally. Uh, will there be a general election? Will there be uh, a second referendum? Will there be a withdrawal agreement? Because let's hope uh, that the withdrawal agreement uh, is that there is a withdrawal agreement agreed uh, in the coming uh, uh, weeks uh, uh, before uh, the uh, European Council uh, of, uh, uh, of, uh, of December. So, uh, on extension, uh, I think that, uh, that there is a, a, a unanimity uh, between the institutions uh, and also in the Brexit Steering Group, President, uh, you are there, uh, to say, okay, let's go forward with an extension if there is a clear uh, path uh, to a solution uh, uh, or to an unwinding of the, uh, of the situation today. And that brings me to uh, my last point, uh, but maybe the most important point on, on, on citizens' uh, rights. Uh, as I said, uh, I will be there, naturally, uh, in AFCO on the 8th of October to listen. It's not the first time I see them, the 3 million. I have seen them many times uh, already. I will be there also in petty in the name of the Brexit Steering Group uh, and I will uh, uh, give you a report on this on the 2nd of, uh, uh, of uh, October. Um, but I have to tell you that um, uh, there is no problem with the uh, protection of the uh, citizens' rights of EU citizens living in, in, in Britain as described in the withdrawal agreement. That's not the problem. The problem is uh, the way the UK administration is translating that uh, into the so-called uh, settled status that uh, EU citizens can ask for, can request in Britain, and the way they, they treat these things. The problem is that uh, they see it as an application. Mm. So people have to ask for it, and they have to prove a lot of things. And some people, for example, living 15, there are uh, examples of people already living a decade or even two decades in Britain, mm -hmm. but they didn't uh, have all their, yeah, 
you know, when, when you lived 20 years ago in Britain, you didn't start by saying, oh yeah, there will be a Brexit, so I will start now uh, to keep record uh, of my presence uh, here. Uh, that's not the first thing what uh, uh, you do. So there have been examples in the British press, but also outside of the, of the press, of people that are not successful in asking for the settled status, where it is clear that they lived already more than a decade in Britain. And that is the consequence of the fact that the, uh, the system that the UK administration has put in place as the way to implement the withdrawal agreement by a, a type of application where they have to prove a number of things, where we have said from day one, from the union side, make it a, a, a registration. So people are asking for and they are registered. And if there is a doubt by the administration, it's the administration who has to come in and say, oh, wait, we will not allow, here we have a, a, a problem with this, with this family or with this person because we have indication that they didn't live more than five years, for example, uh, in, in the UK. Where it is now the opposite. So our idea is from day one, the withdrawal agreement is okay. We don't want to reopen the withdrawal agreement. Eh? That's not the point. We want that the UK administration is um, applying uh, the uh, withdrawal agreement in a way that it is an, an, an automatic registration instead of uh, an individual application uh, as it is uh, now. And it's, it's for good reason, eh? because uh, uh, it, it concerns uh, several tens of thousands, even several uh, hundreds of thousands of EU citizens uh, living there uh, who could have uh, uh, difficulties uh, in the future. That said, there is not only a problem uh, of the treatment of the EU citizens in the UK, there is also a huge problem in a number of member states of UK citizens living in the EU, where also uh, local administrations, national administrations of our member states are making things difficult. And I think it's absolutely uh, uh, necessary that we sort this out uh, before uh, we can give uh, our approval on a withdrawal agreement. So uh, I, I urge you to, uh, to, to work on this uh, with AFCO and, and, and with the Libya Committee. I think we have to do that, uh, uh, President, together with the Libya Committee uh, on, on, on this issue. Again, it's not changing the withdrawal agreement. Withdrawal agreement is fine. It is the way the withdrawal agreement, the settled status, is implemented in practice that gives uh, a problem. And I, I think... Uh, um, but it's on both sides, again. It's not only a question of the EU citizens, it's also a question of UK citizens living uh, in Britain. We have to sort this out before this House can say, OK, we give green light to whatever uh, withdrawal agreement uh, will be agreed on in the, coming, uh, in the coming weeks, if this is happening, uh, uh, naturally. But I want to flag this because you will hear a number of things on the, on the 8th. I, I know already what you will what will be the content of the hearing uh, on the 8th. And uh, uh, we, it, it will be necessary that this Parliament and, and, and AFCO, together with Libe, take a decision on saying, OK, yeah, how far we will go in saying, look, you're going to do it that way, otherwise there will be a difficulty by approving the, the withdrawal agreement. That's a political, uh, a huge political decision uh, to be taken by this Parliament, by AFCO and, uh, and by Libe. So uh, that's it. Uh, mainly, I will not sum it up. Uh, uh, I, uh, the, 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 the five points, and I'm at the disposal of, uh, of the members of AFCO to uh, answer additional uh, questions if they want to have additional detail uh, on the state of play of the negotiations, President. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Guy, for your very clear speech.